Engineers from around the world are converging in San Francisco for what's being called the largest robot competition in the world. And NBC 11's Bob Riddell is checking out the competition. Bob, what's that? It looks like a little R2-D2 there. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> that was Bob. That was Bob, yeah. Yeah, um, before Frank Oz did that, I was the original R2 voice, and then I got cans. Can't understand why. Well, we've come a long way from the talking trash can. Look at that. That is what you call a humanoid, is that right, Dr. Uh, Jackie Bal Malt Baltas here with uh, Robo Games. Yep. Is this pretty standard uh, issue now? Uh, these are actually all. Most of the robots are custom built. Most of the teams built their own robots. Uh huh. And um, uh, they're, they're called humanoids. They're called humanoids because they resemble a human shape. They're a little short, though, don't you think? Well, uh, if you build one about 1.2 meters tall, then you're looking at an expense of about one and a half million uh -huh. dollars, uh, which is outside of the research budget for most. Uh, I, I got you. I know they get pretty expensive. Well, I was thinking, though, is if robots ever take over the world, I hope it's these guys. Because I'll be yeah, right. I don't take them like with, them you know, right, yeah. easily. All right, so uh, this okay. is one of the uh, the categories of the Robo Games, and they've got a bunch of different events. Obviously, yep. I'm looking at one who's getting ready to there's do it. penalty kick. Yeah, there's a penalty kick event. Uh, you've just seen the stepping field, uh, uneven surfaces. We have basketball. We have an obstacle run. Oh, yeah, look at uh, that guy. Now, what's he, what's, what's he the deal to, there? He has to uh, realize that there's an obstacle, and he'll actually crouch down, crawl underneath, and uh, have to stand up on the other side of the Now, obstacle. during the competition, the owner can't be sitting there with a string. Right? Uh, no, no, no. So then they're uh, completely they autonomous? They're fully autonomous. Uh, they have to carry, they have to do all their own decisions. So their, their intelligence is autonomous, as well as their batteries, uh, computing power, everything is on board the robot. And so they have a camera and, and motors and a, and a CPU. Is that pretty yep, much in a, in a right. nutshell? And if you look at uh, that robot over there, it actually uses a mobile phone because oh, you're kidding me. That's, uh, so you can call for, for help? Us. Yeah. Well, not really. It's actually, um, it can make a phone call, but uh, it can use the camera to find the ball or find obstacles and also to balance itself. Oh, so and so for us, a mobile phone is really just a very fast computer with a camera attached to it. What's and it's very cheap. What separates the, the, the winning robot from the losing robot? Is it the way the software was programmed in there, the way that the robot was built? In, in our case, uh, a lot of this is intelligence, so we're focusing a lot on the software. However, uh, you have to build the full package. It's very much an engineering challenge where you need to build the mechanical structure, you need to build the electronics, and you need to build the software such that uh, your weakest link in the chain is still good enough to win the competition. When do you think we're going to get to the point where robots, you know, where we're throwing a ball in a basketball hoop is really not going to be that big a deal? Where it's like, okay, the robot can do that. <laughs> now let's really have it do something that is, you know, more human. Well, I think uh, it'll be coming quite fast. I mean, are you talking uh, five years, ten no, years? No, I think uh, for just these simple tasks, I think five years. I think. Um, 50 years from now, we will have full-size robots. Uh, a lot of these teams that are working on this research are also working on urban search and rescue. The idea is that sure. if we can scale them up, make oh, them hard. Dude, I could have made that. We could have, uh, we could have robots go into a burning building to save people, for example. Very cool. All right, Doctor. Hey, appreciate it. Robo Games, you guys. Well, thanks a lot. Uh, it's our pleasure. Tomorrow and Saturday here at the uh, Festival Pavilion at Fort Mason. Go to our website, mbc11.com, if you want more information. Front row. Oh, good. Thanks a lot, Bob. Yeah.